a pro Zoom account. Well, then, yeah, maybe I should be joining your Zoom, uh, not the other way around. We, we are live. Uh, I got to finish this Instagram post real quick. Uh, you know how it works. That's that's a that's a tough life choice right there. You know we're not going to knock on Dillard's the fact that they're still in business because I think that's that's probably shocking. Number one to me is that how is there still Dillard's? Um, well, Max, it's a good thing you brought that up. Let me let's get into the show. Max, all right, let's. Max, can we wait five seconds till I hit start to transition to the next scene? Jake. What do you want, Jeremy? We're live. Oh, never mind. I'm... What? We're not. We're camera's live. not on yet. Well, you're not live. We're live. I'm recording. It's like the intro to tell people to come follow the, the no, stream. Worries, what? Where are you? What do you no, need? What? Say something. Okay. And on that note. Welcome back, shooters, for a fantastic Team Handball Tuesday edition of Shooting Straight, a handball podcast with JD and Max. Uh, Max, how are we doing today? Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you let us know who your guest is? Well, the Grarin. Oh, yeah, kind of forgot, like, really, really solid player there. Um, Mark, how's it going though? We got a lot of action in the chat already, so this is great. Quite some time. Okay, well, dang. First time uh, on the show. First time caller. We should do a, a call session. Oh, Josh is calling me as we speak. Josh? Hello? Well, I missed his call. Anyways, Josh was trying to call. Um, uh, we got a, a lot of action in the chat, so shout out to Devin, you know our, our good old Dayton lawyer. Uh, he's tuning in here. And we got Martin, as always. Oh, no. They can't hear you guys. God bless. God. I did everything I could. Oh my gosh. We're not doing this crap again. Oh, God bless. Oh, hold on. Let's do this. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Say something. Force can you hear We're me back. Now? Don't go. Don't, don't give me that, CJ. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I apologize. So, anyways, for those that can, uh, can they hear us, what, can they hear us? Let's get a let's get a sound check from our listeners. Testing. Testing. All right. Classic like JD from Mishi. Yep, that sounds right. Uh, can, can you guys hear us? Yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs down on on whether you can hear them. Nothing in the chat. Nothing in the chat. This is. The tension. Special guest Jeremy, round two. He, Jeremy just went to bed. <laughs> just answer the question. 
They can hear us. Thank you, Martin. All right, Martin, top shooter. Thank you, Martin. Let's let's do reintros. Audio is low. Who's low? Am I low? There, maybe they're low. You guys gotta be. Uh, it's probably them. Turn the fucking volume up. I. <laughs> Invest in some speakers, Lester. Okay. I gotta figure out how to turn your volume up. It's the problem. We got a lot of, we got a lot of work. Look, this is tough. Oh, Devin's giving us thumbs down. <laughs> oh, Dev. After I just shouted him out. Volume. They can't hear us. I don't know how to. I don't know how to up the volume. Pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. Maybe this way. Let's pump it this way. JD has to be the worst podcast host. <laughs> in the world. Keep talking. Keep talking. I gotta. I gotta pump up the volume. I will keep telling you that you literally <laughs> are you in like how incompetent are you, JD? Max, I'm not a, a I'm not a radio host. Maybe not you yet. should you should have thought about that before hosting a podcast. <laughs> Look, everybody else in America is doing it, so I said why not? Okay. It's, I think I, I, I have professional athletes all we have a very esteemed guest today. He works for the Cincinnati Reds of Major League Baseball, and you're already fucked up. <laughs> My time is short. I, I'm a, I have a busy schedule to keep here at 9.30 on a Tuesday. Okay. The Reds are in uh, spring training right now. I think, okay. I've, I think I've improved your guys' audio. All right. Thank you, Devin. See? Some people believe in me. Um, all right. Let's, let's take a couple steps back. Uh, so first off, uh, welcome back, shooters. Uh, Max was complaining about my lack of uh, – in in situation see the difference between us and the professionals is that the professionals have a guy that's just doing this it's not it's not what me do you think jeremy is? what do you think jeremy is well jeremy went to bed wake him up dude he's your guest you can make him do shit all right i'll turn you guys up because it's apparently not loud enough yet so um mark please introduce yourself to our esteemed guests as you join the list of uh famous and uh, well-known guests who have joined our show yeah couldn't be more honored to be here like i said if, if, if they'd heard me the first time long time listener first time participant so it's great to be here uh i played those of you who would be here know me from playing handball at ohio state for three years from uh, 2016 to 2019 unfortunately missed out that freshman year but Hopefully made up for it in those three years of productivity. Oh, you, you more than made up for it, Mark. Let me tell you. <laughs> we try. We try over there on that left side. Um, so I played handball there at Ohio State for three years and graduated in 2019. Then I took my talents down to Cincinnati, where I played for Cincinnati Handball Club for a little bit until uh, COVID. But we still run the club there. And we, we got Grant Barnett, alumni, down from Ohio State. And we're going to take it back from there. And uh, that, is, that is a very powerful wing duo, Mark, because you both are playing wing. Yeah. Down there. It's it's I'm really excited about him being down there on the, other, on the flip side of me. That lefty us for me, righty. And uh, we should, take, should uh, take some guys down to business. we got another team in northern Kentucky showing up. And uh, it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Well, since we're already on the topic of down south, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the handball scene down there uh, with Lexington, the Stags coming on the scene. Uh you know, do you guys have a full squad uh, once we return to normalcy? You think? For, for uh, we Cincy? do, we do. It's it's definitely short. We lost a lot of our core international, uh, not necessarily to play handball, but they went over. One went to Sweden, uh, I think another was in Germany. Um, so we we lost a couple people, but we do have a full squad, and and uh, they're strong. We we have some chemistry already. We practiced mostly through um, 2019, and then we had a couple practices in 2020, but. Um, while we lost a couple of players, we do still have a full squad, and we're excited to have uh, Lexington there to keep practices going and uh, new competition uh, regularly. And then the UC team, the college team there, is, is right next door. So we'll either practice with them or have our own scrimmages that way too. But it's definitely a strong team and that we can uh, take around the state. It's, it's fun. Mark, who, win, who wins today, Dublin Drunks or Cincinnati HC? You know, I'm not. I'm never going to bet against Cincy HC. The only thing I would, they're, they're See, I would never bet against the double drugs. <laughs> only undefeated team in America right now. Full full disclosure, I've never seen Dublin Junks play. I've seen the Armada play, but since I left Columbus, I haven't seen Dublin. There, there is currently no difference between the double no. drugs and the Armada. So uh, whether <laughs> I want to put the red jerseys on or the blue jerseys, I uh, got gotcha. Green jerseys so don't be kids exist. At the yet. tournament or adults only. Yeah. I see. I see. We gotta see. We gotta see them go against each other. See the red versus the blue. See what's gonna happen. Little bloods I mean, and Chris, the, yeah. So you know, like we got the co fraud, the co fee fraud stuff going. Once the pandemic's over, so right now actually, because it doesn't exist, we gotta we gotta schedule a game. 
<laughs> it's on. It's Look, on. And Josh has been on my case. I know. I know. Good JD's mindset, right? Like JD's of the opinion that the pandemic was fake the whole time. So, which means, Mark, you guys got to start practicing right now, man. We got to get the game going. We're good to go. We got to get our facility back. The facility's been strict about it. So they still believe there's a pandemic. But once tell, we can tell get them to talk to Doctor Orr and Doctor Orr. <laughs> yeah. no, okay. The doctor. It's just one. It's just two it. syllables. Doctor. I mean, now my my grandma died from listening to Doctor Orr, but but that's fine. Like we're past that. <laughs> Water under the bridge. See, uh, this is where I'd make a comment about Max not having a grandmother, and then uh, I've uh, I've met her, but then he'd probably say that she did die, so I can't be mean about no, it. No, I, I so. do have one one grandmother. I just don't speak to her. Okay, I but see. she's still alive. Yeah. That, or that do I, you not speak to her because she passed away? I, I mean, I don't speak to her because she's alive. But okay. Like, she possibly speak to her. Anyways, let's get off the not talking to our families uh, topic. <laughs> And get back to what's going on down south. Uh, so we got Lexington. <laughs> what's going on down south? Mark Maybe south of us. What, what's, what, what do you mean to say? I just don't love the euphemism there. Oh, jeez. Well, you could come up to Michi's, <laughs> to Michi's point. You can come over to my house instead next time. You can set up OBS. You can come up with the topics. And you can uh, run the show. If you think my ass is driving 40 minutes up It north, is not 40 minutes. Where are you, Max? I'm downtown Columbus. Arena okay. District. That's why I could hear the cannon, because like I'm literally next to the arena. Oh, you literally heard the cannon. Yeah, it was not a joke. Oh, I can't realize that. in my room. That's actually pretty cool. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. Um, so Mark, anyways, uh so we got Lexington. Um uh, mm-hmm. have you watched any of their their games or anything like that? No, I, I'm uh, I'm doing a terrible job scouting. I'll be honest with you. I, I'm, I'm shocked that Mark doesn't spend his own personal time watching Lexington handball. Club. <laughs> listen, listen, as much as I love handball, I gotta hey, do a better job. I'm just saying, Mark's kind of like stepped into with Patrick gone and David busy. Mark's kind of at the like head honcho of the the club down there right now. The, the general like, manager yeah. role down there. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I mean, then talking about our core members, those two are both out, and then we lost. Um, What's his name to Indianapolis? I just you just yeah, told, told Tan- me that Tanya, yeah. Tanya, yeah. and her husband they're having a baby. So, um, hopefully they can get started on the team in Indy. Which uh, shout out to Joey and his friends to getting a, another team off the bo- off the block. This is where I'm a bad person and Joey's a good person because, you know, Joey basically told all his friends who had never played handball before, including his brothers who have all just kind of gone to these other sister cities and said we're starting a team so his brother's starting a team in grand rapids his buddy's starting a team in indy and what have i got to show for it nothing i got nothing. but you know what jd at the end of the day you kept up the shooting straight a handball podcast which i think is a bigger contribution than starting up some teams all right well take this back. joey if you're listening which you probably aren't we still love you so. I, I do not i'm a much better co-host <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you look, Max. Since you've been around, wh- where do you think our quality of guests stands? We've had we've had some some champions with Joey. We've had some champions with you. What do you where do you think where we sit? I mean, I think if we could ever fix our technological issues, we'd be at a much better spot. Do you think we're a good? Is this episode so far? I think a good uh, good episode. I, I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not on Twitch, JD. Twitch <laughs> listeners, what we got? I think we we're clean. We're Chris. We got chat. We got you know seven viewers right now. We're good over here. Man, we're popping. Um, yeah. So Josh is mad at me because uh, he likes Joey more than me because Joey mm. pays him and I don't. So uh, Joey, so it should be the Joey and Max show. We should kick JD out of here. Maybe. I, honestly, I'd consider it. Maybe that's the key. You know, I, maybe I got Josh on, pull up. but pull up. pull up. Who should host the new shooting straight? It, JD, if I was the host, I'd have Josh on just to tell the old uh, story for an entire forty-five minutes. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Josh has lots of stories. The old, the old story. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you want to buy a microphone, some camera and lighting equipment, uh, download all the softwares you need. And okay. deal you know with what, JD, this. I have some questions for Mark. Can you? Okay, can you fine. Well, but Martin, thank <laughs> okay. you for confirming right, so that this Mark, episode is going very well. You're sport right. baseball, right? Like you're you're a baseball guy. You work for the Reds. That's my thing. Do we so call him a seam head? JD, please. How can you justify Mickey Callaway being employed by the MLB still? 
Listen, I Nikki Calloway has a bad rep. I really like him. I'm gonna be honest with you. The, the, <laughs> we're talking about the same guy from the Mets, right? I really think he does. He gets a bad rep for his bullpen strategy. I, I. Uh, I'm not talking about his bullpen strategy, buddy. We. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about the, the oh, idea. The, 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 the deflect, the Mark. Deflect. His, uh, his nickname is Dick Pick Mick because he. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, that's reporters. Whatever. That aside, I don't know. I'm. I'm strictly data analytics on the field results. I don't care. I mean, as long as they're not. Uh, I, mean, I just want to talk about how the, the nickname in the locker room, Dick Pick Mick, is the best nickname you could possibly get. Pretty good nickname. Anything that rhymes, I'm on board with. Yeah, like Dick Pick JD just doesn't sound good. It's just, <laughs> it's not it doesn't good. have the flow, nor is it any bit practical or close to ever happening. So, um, anyways, uh, so you're talking about data analytics, Mark. Did you listen to the uninformed handball hour uh, conversation about big data no. and handball? He did not. I might I'm not just... have heard it, but I, I got thoughts on it. It's okay. Funny you, oh, ways we can do it. Let's let's hear. So like, it. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's a million ways we can use data in handball. First of all, we got to grow the thing. So like, there, it, it's gonna be a uh, a little bit of a journey to get to the point where we can start using data analytics to win these games. Um, but the USA team is there. The national team is there. Where we can we're gonna have to use this to our advantage because we don't have the talent pool that the uh, Europeans do. So we're gonna have to kind of come at it from the, the bottom half, like if you want to go straight to the money ball aspect where the Oakland A's have a 30,000, $30 million roster, whatever it is versus the Yankees, 220 million. Like they're completely outmatched or the Rays were a great example last year. They had it even pretty close to the same difference between them and the, um, and the Astros. Uh, but they can make it work because of the way they, they changed the game for their, in their favor. They know what their pitching staff is worth. They know what they can get out of them and they know what the bullpen can do and they know what they can get their hits and, and their runs. So handball can do the same thing where we can't just go one-on-one -on -one and run overload or whatever we want to call it against these other European teams because they're better at that. We have to find our game as back in 2016 when we had Tony, his way of getting Ohio State better was taking the goalie out every play and throwing that sixth man in, which could have worked. We didn't do a very good job at it. We didn't know what we were doing, but that type of thing where you kind of throw these these uh, wrenches into the where the uh, other team isn't expecting these things to work um, puts us in an advantage and puts us if there's something we're really good at that's the way we can use our data to see where are we the strongest and where can we exploit something that they're either are weak at or don't expect and then that's that's the one we gotta just punish over and over. Now, Mark, here, here's a counterpoint there, right? I I think the data approach is interesting, but have you ever heard the old phrase, "hard work beats talent"? when talent doesn't work hard. Kevin Durant, baby. <laughs> what if instead of utilizing data, we utilized hard work, perhaps forcing players to play by threat of imprisonment? <laughs> by threat of imprisonment. Like, I don't know, as, as much as I like the hardworking American, I don't know that we can outwork, at this at this current point in our development, outwork uh, the European team, any European team at the moment. But does, 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 data beat hard, does data beat hard work and talent? Or just one of them. It it's not for everybody. Like going back to baseball, because that's my thing. The Yankees don't need data analytics. They have enough money to spend as much as they want to buy their home runs and runs that way. So why aren't so they, they winning need... every World Series? They're g getting pretty close. The, yeah. That's the thing. And data analytics doesn't win every World Series. The Rays lost theirs too to the Dodgers. They so lost like, because of a stupid. They did change. their data. That's Honestly, the I don't believe baseball is a sport, so I didn't watch a single game. But I'll just believe what you <laughs> Fair said. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hockey, hockey's getting into it. It's a little tougher with hockey because it's so free flowing, but they're getting into it a little bit. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it does. Data is it's it's uh, as I found in baseball, it's a great way to win enough games to get you the postseason, but it's not a great way to win a single baseball game. I don't know. It's hard to say in handball because it's not there yet. Um, if where it's most effective, it's if it's going to get you tournament wins or if it's going to get you one win at a time so it's hard to say um but it has the potential to anyway it's 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 all about game management the thing with handball is it's not about baseball is you can really run your clock and find ways to um to control the game more than you can in, in most other sports which, which is very which we absolutely have struggled with for a mm -hmm. very long time in america definitely definitely that's that's the, that's uh that's where you can help it like and you can't just like milk it obviously where every 40 seconds you just get the passive play but if you can find ways to show you're, you know, attacking and then 
and then control it, control the pace. Don't let the fast breaks happen. You know, there's there's a million ways you can use it to to, to USA's advantage or anybody else. Mark, would you and be even on defense? If if you find on defense, say that running a five one is more effective than a six flat or something. Oh, like sure. that. Definitely, definitely. You got you got you know with Danilo out there, you got whoever you wanted center back to fly out there and run the, and run around. It's completely disruptive, and and if especially for a, te- a European teams that don't uh, see that very often, it can be great. And something I notice, and maybe it's just me as a layman, I, they never use their wings like we do. The fact that we can, and maybe it's coming from a wing player that's biased too, but the, if we can score from our wings more than they can score from their backs, Europeans in general. I think that could be a huge help as well, just because I see maybe five wing shots per game. I think wing defense is a lot tougher in Europe. Then we can beat that, JD. You just run, as as a wing myself, I'm just bigger and stronger than them, so I can beat them. Or you know, if I, if I was if I was bigger and stronger than them, oh, I, I'm a, I must I must have missed that no. part when you first said it. Um, Mark, with you know, would you be interested in pursuing anything with? Big handball data because we have. 100%. I'm kind of putting together a, a mini crew. Uh, we kind of have an email thread and just general conversations between uh, one of our previous, well, two of our previous guests. Uh, you know, obviously John Ryan and uh, Neil Johnson, who does uh, win probability analysis for ESPN. Uh, so Neil's yeah. based in Columbus. Um, so he's, you know, he I, well. You were gone. He was coming to some of our games uh, to try to kind of teach the guys about collecting he's data. He's also 6'8". Yeah. He should have been on the court. Yeah, he, he's, he should be playing. Um, we'll, we'll get there one thing at a time. We need to <laughs> – yeah, yeah. like he, we were working into that, and then COVID hit, so we've kind of been dead in the water. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll connect you with, with them, and Brian Cothorn is our other – kind of group um oh yeah um what dc right yeah yeah so yeah. brian was like a one-man data crew and then i kind of started poking neil and connected them and they got in all into data data analytic talk and i'm just like look i'm just the guy connecting you two together i'm gonna sure. take a back seat here um you know i do stats with um like the national team but it's not it's not like uh you know expected goal or, um, you know, what formation we should be running kind of level stats. It's just, it's just kind of, like assists and goals, right, JD? It's just assists, goals, turnovers, what transition of scoring, where on the goal, you know, where from the court they were scoring from. Uh, Josh was tr- – Josh and I were trying to build a uh, little model to quickly track, like, where, where on the court and then where on the goal. So I had nine zones – on the court, and I had nine zones on the goal, which would correlate to a number. I and you basically uh, fill that in. So, so um, you made a heat map, JD, is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. That's what we were trying to do, but we ran out of games because this was COVID. Um, now, Mark, your your work with Xavier. Are you are you furloughed right now? Can we get that started again? What's yes, and I hope. Uh, yes, I I did athletic communications for them. Actually, I did data for them a little bit. Um, I mainly worked with their volleyball team, and then I did um, kind of an injury management program. They all were like a sensor, like you might see in soccer too, to manage their vitals. And uh, really what this was for was their jumps. So they, we could see when we need to sub them out because their jumps weren't as high or they weren't as powerful or whatever. But really lot. So I, I kind of ran that a little bit, mainly in practice. I did once for a match toward the end of the season. Um, so uh, I got some experience with that, which is really great. Um, to have, to have under my belt as much as I can theorize about these stats and stuff. It was great to have an impact and see, you know, when we need to take our blocker out and stuff about this blocker for this freshman, because we need her to have rest for five points so we can get back into it. Um, so that's where I really got hands on. I was the main contact for them. I, and by the way, uh, I was in athletic communications for them. So I did stuff like social media. I did the website stats, anything you would read about the team probably came from me or through me to a media. I, I actually read a lot about Xavier handball. So there you go. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so that, so I did that. And then, uh, I worked with the basketball team. Obviously that's kind of an all hands on deck thing. And then I also did baseball for maybe a month before it got shut down for COVID. Um, and then by then I was almost out the door, but are, um, are you got tourney bound this year in basketball? This... No, 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 we were doing so well. Oh, woe is me. Woe 
is me. Where is our internet? Uh, oh, yeah. We're back. I think we got to get to probably the semis or the quarters. If, as long oh, as we play. Wait, wait. I think there's some tech issues. Is what Look. Tony about. We we might have missed the last like ten seconds. Bro, you went offline on Twitch. Oh my god. Oh, that's all right. It I just say. it'll come back. It was. <laughs> it, I I swear it'll come back. This man is come back. Is criminally... Baby, come back. How'd you get us? We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. It's back. It's back. Everything's good. Okay. All right. So, Mark, maybe this is my. Who are you calling? My parents left me a voicemail. I was checking it real quick. <laughs> We're not off that air that long. Um, so, Mark is my own personal bias here. But uh, you know, what would it? T how many? How many of? Uh, let's start with the the easy easy pickets well, here. I got. I got to take this, bro. Fine. Give me a What's up, JD? Let me know. We're talking to Max. He's just muted himself. Okay, screw that. Oh, yeah. I, I can ask you the question. Yeah. I don't know. He looks pretty serious. Um. All right. So, we'll go. Are you fine now, it's Max? Like, it's about trivia world, good. Trivia right. world? Were you yeah. like your phone a friend? No, no, no. Like, are they mom, in the cash cab? Me cat? and my mom play in a trivia league together, and we call each other every day to like talk about our answers for the day. It's the top trivia league on earth. Are you guys okay? Well, it makes I mean, sense for her. She was my on Jeopardy. I I understand. She was on Jeopardy. Yeah, I'm in the top um, like ten thousand. Something since Jeremy moved in that we've been playing. Uh, Geo Guesser, big fan, big I'm, fan. Oh yeah, Geo Guesser fan. Big, I'd be great. Never, I had never seen that till literally last I, week. I usually go like five or five or four out of five on the daily. That's pretty wait, impressive. Are you playing like, like Freaking, the world? Wait, three like, minutes? You're figuring out where you are in three minutes? Yeah, I'm really, really like yesterday. I went five for five. On That's right, Devin. Max does not tell the whole truth. That's right. <laughs> You want to see my? You want a screenshot? Bring them up. Like, Bring them up. Bring them up. Okay, I'm going to you guys. So I will literally share a screen, bro. All right, all right. Anyways, in this time, I will now ask Mark my question that I've been waiting to ask. What you got? Um, we'll start with the, slim, the easy pickings. What percentage of those volleyball players are gonna like basically just go play like rec league volleyball uh, in the U.S. just for fun after graduation? There is listen. There is one from UC who just left. UC is now terrible at volleyball because of this girl. Oh, I wish I could remember her name, but she's on the national team. She might even be the best player on the indoor national team. Oh, snap. Um, she's it, she's amazing to watch. Like it's incredible. Like she steps on you. Like all right, all we gotta do is stop this one girl, and she just puts it wherever you want. She gets up and puts it down. Forgot, right? Jordan maybe. I can't remember, but she played for UC for four years, and she can do whatever she wants in volleyball. She might be turned into one of the best players of all time on that team. She's amazing. Um, only 21. She's got plenty of career left. All right. As for Xavier, it's it's a good volleyball team. It's getting better. We're winning games this year without without me being involved um, and playing off season too. So they got a lot. They uh, kind of got decimated the year before I was there. They had five or six seniors all leave at once. So they had some rebuilding to do, um, but they. Uh, beat expectations when I was there. And then this year they're beating them again, even though it's it's kind of. Um, that, that's not about program. Maybe enable screen sharing real quick, bro. Okay. So, Mark, you um, think you guys are like I don't know like the women's volleyball landscape, but are you guys like a year away from being like top twenty-five or? Uh, no. Um, with the Big East, there's really two good teams, and then there's two or three medium teams, and then the rest. So the the goal for us has generally been. Uh, just to make the Big East tournament and then go from there. And then we can get, in, if we win the Big East, we're automatically in the regular tournament. Ranking is going to be a long way away, but it's really Creighton and Marquette's show for Big East. And then St. John's, Butler, and Xavier kind of compete for the so other it's kind of, Honestly, it sounds just similar to basketball, right? Um, yeah, it works the same as basketball. It's just it's just a smaller tournament. That they, yeah, uh, I'm saying we're like the same teams that are good in basketball. 22 seconds. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you see this? Trailer? Yeah, I see your stats. Like, I'm pretty good. I'd say you're pretty amazing. So yeah, if you want to see the map, uh, these two were same country, just wrong parts of country. Uh, this one was pretty close. Jeez. This one I messed. I just messed up my Eastern Europe. Well, a pro geo guesser would know that Germany is never an option. Really? Yeah. Why? The like Jeremy said something had to do with their like. 
Oh, geez. Anyways, uh, I know this. Proprietary laws or whatever. So, or okay, but I mean, I'm just good at what I do. Yeah. Okay. Well, nobody can see your guys' face now, so we're gonna <laughs> shut it shut it down there. Okay, I'm gonna play today's challenge while we keep talking. Okay. So, Mark, the whole reason I was asking that question is because yeah. what do you think the coach and or any of those players would have any interest if I reached out to them and said, hey, you know, we might be able to get you to playing on the U.S. junior national women's national team for handball, uh, not volleyball. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I would say yes and no. Yes, they have the skill set to do it, obviously. They, they're great armed. They can jump and move, and they have the endurance. Um, lateral quickness, like, the, it's all there. That's a great uh, – great thing to ask the only reason i might say they would be hesitant is one the physicality of it is much different than volleyball it's it's very it's while it's a team sport and uh, active it's it's kind of a solo thing at the same time where there's a, a net there's not much contact um uh at all really so that aspect would be different and probably something they, they wouldn't be used to but it's obviously something they could learn if they're interested in pursuing uh now, now mark uh, with, with coaches be where would the coaches be wary of that? Like, would the coaches be scared enough of the contact and not let their kids play? Because that's one of the concerns for us with, like, men is, like, the football coaches don't want their kids playing on a sport. During college, I think that I, I think it would be an issue. Uh, directly after college, obviously, that's out of the question. But during yeah, it, they have, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot to go through for a student athlete, whether or not it's a varsity sport. Like, some schools are small enough where, like, this, the men's team actually at Xavier isn't uh, a varsity sport. They have their own club, like, like we yeah. do at Ohio like us. But uh, the women's team is probably too serious and too time consumed to have time for handball. But um, but after like I mean yeah, as long as they're aware of it, like and we, we get a club star there, they could you know jump in for a practice or two maybe or, or do non-contact drills if they have the time. As long as they're interested, and then after college, that could be uh, two two things. Easy. Two things that uh, well, one thing that I came up with, and one thing that Devin brought up. Uh, thing one is. You know, we had three girls from our women's team at Ohio State make the junior national team, having only been playing handball for a month. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think, but to your point about allowing them to, to leave for a week, you know, maybe off season for a week to go play some other sport, I get that. Um, but to, to Devin's point is that beach, you know, might be the best path forward because uh, I look at the women on the beach and team and, beach and Mishi, if she's still watching, can can attest to this that uh, I think we're not a extremely tall beach beach team on the women's side. I mean, I think the average height might be you know five ten or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So if we get in some some six five six six ladies to come in that. I don't know. That might well, might help. You guys are, there's no, yeah, they're, they're not 6'5", 6'6". They're, 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 they're probably about six feet. They're not actually not. Oh. I was going to say, I didn't balance, think 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six, that's, like, that's like Dang. WNBA level. Yeah, they're not oh. that. The, the right. girl from Cincy that I was talking about, I wish I could remember her name. I'll try to look it up. Uh, she's pretty tall. She might be 6'5", or so. I'll try to look it up. Okay. I mean, if we could get like a Brittany Griner on the on the national team, that'd be great, but it's just not realistic, J.D. All right, all right. Oh, hey, J.D., I just hit on the first... The first one of today's challenge was an easy Bolivia one. If you played today, oh. Jordan Thompson. Jordan okay, Thompson. Jordan Thompson. Shout out Jordan. Um, so then my next question on this, Mark, is, uh, you know, yep. are there any like walk-ons or basically anybody that we might be able to like peel off? I mean, that's where I'm, I'm talking like one-offs. Just come for a weekend, screw around, or there's too much risk mm -hmm. involved that. There's no interest from the varsity athletes that will have to go the club sport route. Not, uh, not at Xavier. It's 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 possible. Um, I feel like OSU would be more realistic. Right, like that, Ohio right? State's probably got tons of those athletes that would do it. Um, but Xavier is too small. However, there are people not on the varsity team that play volleyball either just for fun or in the in the club sport level so there there's the players with the skill set they're just not d1 players you know mm -hmm. so uh the thought is the um there's potential there i'll say but I, I would i wouldn't try to start or 
um, push too hard for the varsity team to try to get him to handball. However, um, if they're aware of it, maybe they have to sway with their friends and stuff who also play volleyball outside of, the, of, of themselves uh, to get that going. And then they can be fans and do whatever they want and jump in when they want. But Xavier's um, what, like 12,000 undergrad? Even less than that. I think it's like yeah, 6,000. Yeah, I thought it was like okay. 5,000 more. Yeah, it's something, it's something like five or 6,000, yeah. All right, Devin, I still have to come to your guys' game. I was still fixing. Kaylee can vouch. We were updating uh, my buddy's new house, all of his electrical wiring, so that's why I wasn't at the game on Sunday. So I should be there this weekend. No more excuses. Um, yeah, so, okay, so why don't, uh, we got two minutes left on this Zoom. So are you guys cool if I hit uh, end here and we'll come back and we can talk a little bit about the uh, article I sent you that Martin found on Twitter, Mark? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Do Max, it. you yeah, okay? I'm trying to hit this geogas. I think this is Switzerland. What, what yeah, you got? I'm going to go Switzerland on this. Part. Green Mountains? <laughs> it's oh. All right, I'm glad I didn't go, Devin. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and it just feels Okay. Oh, it was, JD, it was Switzerland, bro. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Sure. Yep. You're welcome, buddy. What's up, JD? Oh, jeez, you guys flipped. Son of a, son of a nutcracker. Got to do the old switcheroo. Um, yeah, I figure out what's country this is, bro. This is, this is talk, talk us through. What, what is it? Europe? Is it South America? Uh, it's, it's an, it's an English-speaking country. English-speaking country. That means so I'm between, Malta. But Malta. It, it feels European. Malta. I'm leaning towards England. Malta. <laughs> it's not. Malta. It's not Malta. Spicy. All right. Fine. I'm looking, JD. You know, okay, it's New Zealand. Uh, okay. Where are they goats? You know the easiest way. Uh, I, uh, sheep. What? What you gotta do? <laughs> no, the easiest way for any country is to know the country, uh, it, the country like Street. website codes. So like, I found a truck yeah. which which is says dot nz. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Easy. Yeah. So so what's ee? Well, European Estonia or some shit. Good. Well know. done, Max. It's Estonia. I was just testing him. Yeah. Passed. Okay. So, uh, for those that didn't know, I think I retweeted it. Uh, I had a little conversation there on Twitter with Martin. Oh, because um, you don't retweet anything, JD. No, Everyone I, knows. I don't retweet. If you get a retweet from me, it's really valuable. Um, I don't I do not do it too often. Um, no, sarcasm. Here, no sarcasm. No sarcasm. Uh, All you got to do is mention handball. <laughs> look, Josh was giving me a hard time because I went back and one day I was waiting for my car. That's what I was doing. I was uh, waiting for my oil change and I did a deep, deep, deep dive on like really old handball videos and pictures on Twitter um, where people just mentioned the word handball. And I really ticked off these guys in Dallas. It's like two guys that live in their parents' basement and they're like 45 um in dallas they were not not happy um i used to live there jd could have been me i don't know <laughs> anyways so mark uh there's an article talking about xavier and how uh they said you know basketball has been kind of up and down uh it's not football school and they're talking about switching to other sports and they said why not handball so mark why not handball no, no good reason to be honest with you. It's, it's a perfect place to have handball. UC's got handball. They got a, a large team and a good team to, to play against. Lexington's got a team. We now have a team, a prof two professional teams nearby. See if it's the perfect spot to have a handball team. It'd be, it, it's uh, the, the the issues are more logistics than um, uh, what's potential. The, what's it's the through rec the roof. center? The, the department knows about it. There's there's there is a rec center. They're actually rebuilding a new one. The Champion Center is coming soon. 
So if there's enough courts in there, that could be a potential venue that would be inside and be a great opportunity. Um, most of, it's usually the student athletes get most of these uh, things to themselves, but there are gyms for the regular student as well. Um, so the, the the potential is there. Is they got to build the facilities. They got to we got to have um, the word out. It's going to take a little bit of growth and struggle to get a full team together because, like I said, how small these classes are. So the the people that were looking for clubs, athletic clubs, then enough people to join handball at once to start might be a struggle. But once we can get that ball rolling, I and, think and now Mark, are you the are you the guy for that? Like, are you going to lead the charge there? I'd like to hope so, but I don't know how long I'll be at Xavier. To be honest with you, if I even get to come back, but. Um, yeah, they, I like, I, I wear my handball stuff in the office enough that the athletic department's aware of the thing. So like, if, if we get to a point where we have enough organization here around Ohio and in the uh, Midwest, I think we can re we could, you know, get their support to really start something strong over there. I mean, that's even at the club level, like that's all we need. Oh yeah. 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 That's, that's for, for first. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if they want to, they want to throw money into it, that'd be great. But no, yeah. Just to get the club started. I think that'd be great. Now for people that don't know. Uh, Xavier and UC are what, like three exit on 71? Uh, two, yeah. Two, They're two, two exits. exits. Three, three okay. miles, two exits, yeah. All right, I was, I, I was close, okay. There, there's a billboard uh, with one side Xavier, one side UC, halfway between. It's, it's a true right uh, crosstown rivalry right there. Literally, yeah. Um, yeah, and the thing is, is that, you know, if you guys could get another team down in that area with Lexington, and if we can get things rolling in Dayton, um you know, I was talking with my brother-in-law. You know, he's got a lot of buddies that will be graduating here and going to college. So we got a couple right staters and uh, some right more state date. Wrong. Yeah, right state wrong school, uh, Daytonians. So yeah, wait, right, right state is yeah, yeah, yeah. Dayton. That's where my clone went, JD or the baseball player. Yeah. Uh, you ever seen him, Mark? No. He got drafted by the Marlins. He was. I think I think he's still in their their franchise. Uh, anyways, he's pitching, right? Yeah, I think he's second or third base. I can't remember. Okay. Um. Anyways, oh, yeah. uh, shows over. <laughs> yeah. When you type in JT, the second yeah. guy show up behind you. Yep. So I guess it's he's more important than me. Outfield. Oh, and infield. <laughs> I think he set some some records in college. Uh, let's get some more some more questions, Mark. Uh, how do you get the March Madness stuff behind you? I think it's great. Then. Oh, this stuff? Yeah. Uh, well, when I worked for Ohio State's uh, athletic department, uh, you get the perks of going to the to certain venues that Ohio State goes to. For Like, I was. Um, and then March Madness came to town here, so I got some swag from them. Um, it's got, like, I don't know if you're, uh, like, it has it. Yeah, so I saw Ohio the State logos yeah. on it and whatever. Um, so, yeah, when they're done with the tournament, they just throw the signs away. So I'm like, what can I take? And took one, two, three, four, five, six signs here. There's one on my door, too, that says um, the uh, the Cups one. I can't tell the first. This one's on my door, too. So there's a few. But, yeah, when they – I got to work the tournament when they came for March Madness last year. Then Women's Final Four, I got some signs from that, too, somewhere else. So uh, that's the cool part of being in sports is we get, kind of get rid of all this marketing stuff. And uh, we just, we'll just take whatever we want before they toss it. Now, are you are you trying to come back to Ohio State, or has has that? It'd be great, out? but they kind of changed the position behind me. So at first, when I left, oh. they didn't hire any of the students straight to full time. You said you had to leave it and then come back if you wanted that job, which is fine. Um, I, I think it's a little backwards, but I get it. They're trying to give a much enough people opportunities at Ohio State and grow their network and stuff. So that's that was their thinking. And, um, that they have an apprenticeship for every two years. Every year they switch somebody out for a new good person. It's a two year job. Um, and then you get to full time after that. But uh, starting last year, they switched it again to where this apprenticeship. Uh, now you have to have less experience than I have. They say you can't have more than six months experience. So I oh, think I don't. Yeah, it, it seems backwards to me. Like I said, I think the point is, I think like I'm just surmising is that they're trying to get as, as much people through Ohio State and starting in sports industry as they can because it's such a tough, tough business and competitive business to be a part of. Um, so from that sense, I respect it that they that all these students are getting their shot, but it kind of sucks that they're also uh, hosing the people that have their entry level position already, and they're trying to get move up from there. So mm -hmm. um, I I'd love to go back to Ohio State. I've I've always been an Ohio State fan. I, I love that school. I go back anytime, but I don't know unless a full time job opens up from um, a regular one of the regular staff members. I'm not sure where it'll come in, but I'd be much more open to going out. 
Now, now here's a follow-up question, Mark. I don't know if you saw the Twitter debate yesterday about unpaid internships. There's a big sure. old debate. Where where do you side on unpaid I, I, internships? I'm on the side. A lot of you know, big in sports. I'm on the side of labor is labor. Every single internship deserves to be paid because of dignity of work. And if you don't pay an internship, paid an experience, right. Max. Here's it just makes it so only privileged white people can work jobs. And if that's what you want, a society, JD, where the only kids that can work jobs are rich white kids, that's fine. Hey. I prefer a society where we're able to pay these people so that they don't need to take out second jobs or they don't need their parents to provide everything. I was never in the position of unpaid intern after high school because I had to provide for myself, JD. Some people like you who have weatherman money didn't need that. <laughs> now, please, Mark, we'd like to hear you. It's tough because it, it, on the surface and from my from my lifestyle growing up, uh, if you if you're willing to take the job, you don't need to pay it. The, the reason there's unpaid internships is because they know people are going to take the job and not want to get paid for it. Uh, no, Ohio State was paid. I, I, I've I've I'm I've I'm, I don't know. There's, there's there's plenty of opportunities like in in sports since it's so tough. They know they don't have to pay that much or or anything. Mm -hmm. People still take it because they need the experience and, they, and it's a fun enough job that they'll do it anyway. Then bartender, whatever they want to do for the for the income. So I, I'm on the side. Of, I get it. As as long as someone's willing to do it, the company has the same right to to not pay them if, if there's still, still people applying and trying to take the job. To your point though, it's not a fair game when you do that. There's people that can't literally can't afford to not pay get paid to do the job they want to do, which sucks. And I, the workaround is 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 difficult. Uh, it's, it's easy enough to just say go ahead and pay them, but then if the financials aren't there, they they can they can easily just make someone else do twice the work and and pay them the same salary instead. And then this person, no one gets the job. So uh, it, it's a difficult thing with no perfect answer. Um, but if I had to just boil it down, there's a reason people don't get paid to do the jobs because they're still taking it. I'm also yeah, also sports. Sports is the one industry where it's still prevalent. Like in my industry. I got paid 18 bucks an hour as an intern. I had no issue. Like sure. no one was going unpaid. But in sports, because as you say, it's so competitive. Everyone and their mom wants to be in sports. You're getting a thousand applicants for a basic position. Yeah. As, as, as long as people are taking it, I think they have this, they. It's 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 smart. It's a little unethical, but it's a smart business move just to you save the money. People are going to take it no matter what we say. So why even bother paying? It? It doesn't work in every industry, but in sports, it's competitive. Unpaid internships, which are illegal if you're displacing any work a salaried employee would do. Fun fact. Mm. Interesting. Max, yeah. do you remember the intern we tried to hire? JD, you tried to hire a gang member. There is a big difference. <laughs> Anton? No, no. no. Anton's not a gang. tried to hire a legitimate <laughs> gang member. This guy, you know, I, was, I felt bad uh, that we didn't kind of follow up with him. But at the same time, I was kind of glad he didn't show up because I had to bring Max as my backup because I was like, someone needs to be in the parking lot if I get killed. Um, this man no-showed the interview, but JD didn't really tell me what was going on until I got there. Like, right before I got there, he was like, hey, like this man's in a gang. Check out his face. <laughs> it was, he it was, was bad. actually a gang. Like, it, was no, it was bad. There was no exaggeration. But I have two interns right now, neither of whom are paid. And... They, also, they also don't do anything, JD. I they think there's a difference do between having market an research intern. for me. They don't do. There's a difference between, for me, right, having an unpaid intern who say does two hours of work a week yeah. at most of research, or an unpaid intern that's coming in eight hours a day and sitting at the office and doing shit. Right? There's a big difference. If they want to be your unpaid intern for two hours a week on their own time, I'm I'm generally okay with that. Okay. But unpaid internships where they expect you to come in every day, sit at a desk, they give you company perks and stuff like that. Those all deserve to be paid. If you're spending eight hours a day, you deserve to be paid. All right. Let me transition this a little bit. Mark, how can we get more folks like yourself uh, in the sports world to take a unpaid internship that I need in handball? Uh, I don't imagine it'd be that difficult. Okay. So then what, do I, what am I doing wrong that I can't find them? You probably because you're gonna. It's gonna be need to be um, the job posting is gonna need to be put in a place where people are gonna see it. Yeah, and we're uh, posting on like Indeed and shit. I gotta pay yeah. for that though. If you can get it, yeah, exactly, because that's that's you're gonna. Yeah, I don't know. So it's it's difficult. Like you can try FanGraph. Like the places people work in in sports. FanGraph. What was that? FanGraph. Never heard of this. Um, and then there's. Uh, 
NCA marketplace uh, teamwork you probably have to pay for, and that's more for professional teams in the front. Right, hold on, slow down. I can't write fast enough. Fan graphs. <laughs> Fan graphs. NCA, NCA mark NCA marketplace. That's that's um yeah that might be tough for you too but uh, whatever I'll know. I'll figure it out okay continue yeah, yeah. and then teamwork online. There's, there's a few others but those are the three at least the three I look for when I'm when I'm judging. So like would it make sense like what technically was your degree? I know I've asked you and Bob this you know because you guys had the same. It depends who's asking. Okay. Um, it's sports management, sports communication, sport industry, whatever the job asks for. I just say that's what it is. What did you think it makes sense for me to reach out to people in that department if they could send you know direct me like if I could come in and talk to a class and be like hey. You know, here's this opportunity that you could come in and basically be the person laying the groundwork for an entire sport. You know, would you have any interest in that? We can't pay you, but you could say you're one of the, you know, people that helped build a sport in America. Yeah, you, you'd have to lean on um, not even like that's that's a great pitch. The, the, what they're going to want, if not money, is the is the way to get money so if if this will either a take them to the top of handball and give them ceo pay they'll take it it's that, all, all the all, all the money in handball at the moment right exactly that, that's going to be a little unrealistic for them what about an internship in europe kids love that that'd be another interesting point so there's a few ways you could pitch that or you could say this experience when you lay the groundwork is going to have you put you on a resume to have uh a leg up on everyone else in this classroom you know it's it's the, it, we're all competitors if you you got to put it in a competitive way and you got to put it in a way where they're going to want to make money and, and succeed in sports so it, okay. if not all that appealing now the money the money isn't all is it most people aren't in sports for the money they're in because they like to do sports right so focus more on the, the unpaid parts not the big that's why i can never understand y'all i love sports more than anything mm -hmm. but at the end of the day that paycheck that's the thing. That's the thing. You got to sacrifice that to, to be in it. That's it's why. I, I do, but, that's uh, why we don't have the arena members yet. Members of the sports community and the pharmaceutical community. Me and JD agree on a lot here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Mark, if you're interested, right? JD's company, Hickamaw Pharmaceuticals, yeah. is hiring forklift drivers. Third and shift. And discussions with them, legitimate discussions about becoming a third shift forklift driver. Would you also be interested in driving them? Jeremy. Have, Jeremy just have, started. Have, Jeb's there. Get a whole game. I'm licensed to drive a forklift, my guy. Shut there up. I am licensed to drive a forklift, an H truck, an OP, you name it, I can drive it. Snap! When? <laughs> I well, well, I'm I'm in Richmond now. I and I'm over at Home Depot developing communication skills. So, I I uh, I do deliveries and drive the forklift. I want a forklift license so bad. Be sick! I'll tell you what, man, it's worth it. <laughs> I'm thinking this is the title of the episode right here is uh, something with forklifts. <laughs> can I go to like a local school, school or do I have to get a job at Home Depot? You probably don't have to. You can probably do it online. It, really, it took me 20 minutes to get my license. <laughs> it's like the state license? No, it's not. It's, it's well, it's a, it's a legitimate certification, but it's not like Virginia certified or whatever, Ohio certified forklift driver. It's a small little thing. It's, it's, you got like trained. Like forklift drivers of America? Dude, put that on your yeah, fridge, I don't, I don't Max. Know who, it's, who it's under, but yeah. I know, Mark, have you, have you seen the forklift t-shirts? Like the... <laughs> Like the I'm a forklift driver, like respect me type t-shirts. Like, oh, no, I haven't. I'll get one. <laughs> yes. Google, Google forklift driver t-shirts. There's a amazing. guy There's a guy who worked with me and left to be a full-time forklift driver. He makes like 25 an hour just at a distribution warehouse. I told you, Max. <laughs> that, that's what, like, I, make, I make more than that now, but I mean, I could take a pay cut for the hell of it. Yeah. <laughs> just forklift. just yeah. driving the forklift around. I'm telling you, it's not a bad gig. And there's no downside. Like if you crash, you just like... Blame the forklift. Yeah, sure. the malfunction. <laughs> you know? What's up with that? Yeah, that blade fell on that. I mean, you can't get drunk <laughs> at work, but like outside of that. I mean, yeah, oh my gosh. Um, all right, I really like this because this is, you know, Mark. This is where I, you know, need to figure out how I can capitalize on just getting more sports-minded people into the handball world. You know, if I had a thousand of you and a thousand of Bob. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like we'd be in a much better yeah, place. Yeah, probably somewhere in that, yeah. It's actually but, really interesting. I, we've never had, like, a sports professional, like, in the admin world on here before, have we, JD? I don't Bob. Think so. Bob is. You weren't. As a yeah, I don't Bob, know who Bob, Bob is. Bob you keep saying I, Bob, and I have no idea who this is. The doctor. Dr. Bob Healy the third. Big guy. Bald. Oh. Plays for Pittsburgh. I've, I've ne never met this man. Robert Healy. Look him up on Facebook. Yeah, dude, oh, Ro you... oh, Robert Healy. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just saying I this I know we now. call him Bob. Yeah. Is he is... a doctor or what? 
Oh, he made fun of me for calling him doctor. He's a doc. He has his doctorate in, uh, is it just communications or in like sports? I don't think he can get a Does doctorate. Does he work for like, the Steelers or some shit? Who's he working? He works for, for Duquesne. Duquesne. He's a professor. Oh. A little too Catholic for me. Duquesne too Catholic? Catholic? Aren't they Jesuit? No. Oh, what are they? Yeah, they are. They're not Jesuit. John Carroll's Jesuit. I'm I'm gonna Google this right now. I'll bet you fifty bucks. I do not want to send you fifty dollars. I don't <laughs> think they're Jesuit. I have tough news, buddy. God bless. Wow. Wait, uh, let's go to the. There's like only seven Jesuit okay, it's, colleges. It's Duquesne yeah, University it's not the Jesuit. It's... Okay, it's not Jesuit. It's Catholic. There's a is difference there... between Jesuit and Catholic. No, there's not. Yes, there is. Xavier's Catholic. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Xavier's there Catholic. Xavier's Catholic, but Spirit. not Jesuit. Bro, well, I thought Jesuit was just Catholic. No, no, no. Jesuit's like hardcore Catholic. Okay, but at first you said they weren't Catholic. All right, whatever. I doubled down. I hedged my bet. We're wrong. Mark, are you Catholic? I'm Catholic. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Okay. About a fifty percent. You got an opportunity at a school good, like Good, good uh, Catholic boys not eating meat on Fridays here. So. Yeah, there you go. Don't eat meat uh, on Fridays either. What's your point? Okay, we can't all be Jewish. I mean, I don't eat meat because I don't. Rep. Ronnie Jackson made sexual comments, violated alcohol policy, and took sleeping this? pills while he was White House physician. Just got a news alert. It's kind of mm. kind of fun. It's not yeah. handball news for me. Sorry, um, JD. Well, let's get back to handball. Anyways, Mark, to handball. Mark, my point is that getting more people like yourself involved would be very, you know, influential. I think, and you know, Melissa and you know Ryan Johnson, the new CEO, they need a lot of passionate, interested parties to help out. So Melissa's got like a handful of interns right now that are helping her between social media and yep. communication with people. So um, I don't know if they could pay you, but, you know. Listen, I want to be involved. Like I said, I'm not in for the paycheck. I'm in it because I like sports and I like handball. If they need help, I'm, I'm willing to help. And now, now, Mark, let's get back they absolutely to need help. Was, they absolutely need help. What was your favorite help. moment as an Ohio State handball player? Great question. Easy. Uh, beating West Point, seeing your man over there cry a little bit after he got off the court. That uh, well, I'm always going to that. I'm nope, slapping the floor. I can't, I can't. Defensive stop for once in my life. Uh, West Point gold, wherever the second team is, that's where we beat at, at Ohio State. Yeah, but familiar. But, uh, <laughs> but that easily is my number one move moment. I can't remember anything else besides finally knocking those guys off after going like one and ten or whatever it was. So that easily that was at uh uh arnold maybe it was at, it was at one of the ones we hosted. yeah that was, that was arnold 2019 correct yeah last year yes yeah, yeah it was right before we took the the uh goon squad over to uh unc because no one wanted to go because of final i'm so mad i wasn't on that squad i wish i had i'm glad we win i was real nervous the whole time i was trying to get enough people to go I was, i'm really glad we had enough people to go to i mean unc is remarkably fun like were you there 2016 yeah, I went both times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's when I played time. with you guys, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were playing yeah. B team, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, no, the UNC the last go around is when I totaled my car, so that's why I couldn't go. Um that's the second time that's come up this week. That's we you shouldn't have totaled your car, JD. Like, that's right. That's you fun. played with a, you, you played goalie with a broken hand that game or something like that. No, I didn't go. Dale played goalie. Oh, the second time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Second time. Dale did a great job too. I don't know if he still plays goalie at all for you guys, but he did a no, great job. He, Dale's he's Dale's he's trying to go to Europe. He's trying. He's trying. We're in the little talks with uh, FC Barcelona. Yeah, you know, we're good friends up there. Um, no, but like seriously, Mark. Like, if kids would want to play, you know, work with European clubs, like I think we could definitely arrange that to do. I mean, like we could, a, Ortega or, needs people. I assume, yeah, right? Mark's now the head men's coach at Volendam. Give him my number. Ah. Let me know I'm interested. You, you're interested in going to Volendam? It's a I'll nice, it it's a nice to fishing town. Yeah. I'm, I've been here for a year waiting for sports to get back in. I want to is, do it. Is it D? Is it D one Dutch or D two? I think it's D one Dutch. I don't think there's. I don't know how many divisions of Dutch handball the, there is. Eredivisie. Era Divis, Era the women's league is good. The men's is, eh, it's just normal. You central. I mean, is Ortega like getting an income out of this? Yeah, it's a full time job. Like he's got yeah, a. That does not mean it's Max. He has a perfect. He has a master coaching license from the IHF. <laughs> JD, EHF. what I've come to realize a long time ago is every single thing in the handball community in America is fake. 
This is true. I can make my you own and I, <laughs> you you and I uh, have done plenty of that. That's for yeah, sure. We, we're two as, of the most guilty parties in the country. Yeah. As, as we found, Max uh, finished last in the 2019 general board of directors election with 12 uh, votes. 12, <laughs> 12 strong votes. And you know what? Five Olympians voted for me. There were five people out That's, there who committed. Honestly. Who voted for me at age 20. It's honestly pretty wild, uh, I think. Yeah. For those of you that are asking, the results should be posted soon. Uh, you know, and, J.D., this was, this was also tick, after tick, tick. I don't know what's taking so long. What? We claimed I finished in third for a solid – or second for a solid two years. Yeah. No one could have – you know, no one could have disproved it. So now we, there's we thought facts. thought the election was hacked. The I mean, I, I still hacked. thought it was rigged. Um it's a little too close for comfort, in my opinion, but whatever. Um, anyways, we kind of talked about it. And Mark, do you have any questions for us? It's been a long time. Well, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have a question for you guys. I just hope you guys are doing well. I know Coach Jor over there has got all these different <laughs> new, new handles. And dogs oh, on. that's what we didn't talk about. Like, so you're about Team Chaos. All right. That, that is yeah. the oh, yeah. thing I've ever seen. What, what, what are you here saying? What about Team Chaos? What is Team Chaos? Who decided that? Can I talk to whoever is in charge and tell them to stop? Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let, let me let me fill you in here. So, uh, I was contacted by several members, elite members of the collegiate handball community, and they said... <laughs> that, that does not exist. <laughs> they are on the junior national team, and their complaint was is that when they are competing with the junior team, and they returned back to their college clubs. It was a significant step down, and that their quality of play suffered by playing with their teammates at the college level. So they wanted to compete with better quality teammates while still helping to improve their club level. So they came to me and asked for you know help, and I said, "Why don't we?" You know, I don't know. Maybe they came up with the idea, but I helped them facilitate the idea of a college all-star team. A true. Well, who decided on Team Chaos? Like that's a fine idea, but Team Chaos. Oh, I just like Chaos. Can I'm... we just have like the USA Collegiate All Stars? No, I Is like that... Chaos. I came up with Chaos. <laughs> I'm gonna defer to Mark, the sporting professional here. From my spit standpoint, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. All right. Well. Hey. Yeah, communications expert. Hey, Mark, what I don't mind it. Tell me, tell me more what it is, and I'll see if I like it. The acronym is College Handball. Uh, Oh dang it! College ham- to- college handball for American Olympic success. <laughs> That's just roasted me. So thank you, oh, Devin. Oh, no. Okay, yeah, sure, good. Yeah, Anyways, you agree with me that that sucks, right? I I, I I like the acronym, like the cool that you made an acronym called Chaos. I think you're pushing it a little bit. Okay. But, look. We'll see what, what's it about. We're still just running with chaos because I'm all about chaos. So, uh, like I said, the goal is to take one, two, maybe two or three players from each college team in America. They'll meet up once over the summer, have a training camp. with a. We'll fly in a coach from Europe um, who will do a week-long training camp with said players. Uh, the team will then uh, basically compete together through U.S. Handball sanctioned tournaments so that they can uh, qualify for the elite uh, tournament. Yeah, so, so we're going to throw them into open. Okay. That, that, you see, that no, makes sense. Elite. I like that idea. They're going to qualify for elite. Yeah, I'm saying we're going to throw them into the U.S. Open at the elite. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I, I like that idea. And uh, But they'll still play about. with their college team at college nationals. You see, J.D., that is an actual genuinely good idea, failed by the awful name. <laughs> what what, what name brand. you want, then? Just... American Handball College All Stars, like what a that yeah, that sounds that. way that more happens. dumb to me. I, I don't like throwing the name All Stars out there. All Stars right. is like thank you, Mark. Point. Yeah, it's lame. So, so J- J- this J- isn't the you know wait, wait, NBA J- All Stars of the nineties. Go on. Uh, if I sell fun, can I uh, be an assistant coach at the camp? If you sell fun, yeah, yeah, uh, no problem with that. You're gonna be there, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, if you're like assistant coach, I just want to be an assistant too. But I'll tell them fun. Yeah, so the goal is also for coaches, so that there will be a coach that's basically training with the European coach, so that he'll coach this team as they go to compete in tournaments. There will be a training camp in the summer, training camp in the winter. We'll try to coordinate a spring break trip. Um, 
the goal is, is is USATH funding this or is no this the IH, the IH, the IHF. Is IHF grant? yeah oh sweet yeah yeah so the uh, you know the other avenue is that maybe they would just turn the summer training camp into them competing at say Partilli Cup or the one in Taramo, Italy, or whatever. There's a multitude. There's The options are limitless on yeah. that op- situation. The key is picking the players and getting people to want to do it and getting the funding. So, um, you know, we got to put together the jerseys, got to get some sponsors, uh, help fund it on that front. But I'm, I'm just saying put, put me on the coaching staff as a top American assistant. I will not disappoint. <laughs> All right. Then. We'll see what we can do on that front. But that is Team Chaos. Gotcha. So, All of which is not conveyed in the branding whatsoever. Look, I didn't come up with the logo. I just came up with the name. Who came up right? with the logo? It was self-designed. I'm not going to... I ain't no rat. You ever <laughs> seen The Departed? All right, you know what happens to a rat? I think it was you. No, it wasn't me. I it have people. I have you. people that make me stuff. Like our nice logo here for the podcast made by my nice cousin dustin is that silly? what if somebody do they make that from scratch mark i'll send you 50 bucks right now if you can take a guess on uh, i'll give you three get two guesses on who that is a silhouette of first guess is always going to be hansen no second guess I'm, I'm where's his hair if that's hansen yeah i got the logo uh-huh all right well you're out of guesses oh man um, I've never told anybody. What's he oh holding in his left hand? What's the, what's the circle? So everybody left? asked me, they're like, JD, why is your guy playing ping pong? And I'm like, it's a <laughs> microphone. Like, God bless. It's a podcast, you know. You get, yeah, yeah. Okay. Jeez, <laughs> is, it, is that Carter Hall, JD? Carter's left-handed. Is that guy not left-handed? No. Give me... Does he play for Ohio State? You're out of guesses. No more clues. Yeah, JD, we, okay, we're not doing it for money now. We're doing it for fun. Give us a hint. Nope. I've, I give this to anybody that wants to guess. I always ask so if somebody brings it up. I'm like, I'll, get, I'll send you money if you can get guess who it is. I don't want your, I don't want your dirty money, JD. <sighs> All right. Well, if anybody's still listening and then they come on the show and they remember this for if they ever come on the show, I'll let you continue to guess and I'll tell you if you're correct. Three I'm guesses good. each and then we're done. I've used one of mine. Well, three more guesses. Um, Mark, what would you say is one of the biggest struggles with playing wing while we come up with more guesses? The biggest struggle is learning how to use your is, – is to not be afraid. Use your steps, attack the ground, get your angle. Um, I'm not the longest jumper, but I think I use my jump effectively enough. And I know uh, how to either draw a free seven by taking my steps on the wing because no one knows at wing defense very well. And uh, – the, and then, you know, finding your shot from there because goalies have obviously an easier time guarding a wing shot because they just have to guard near post or take a step off and give you a little bit on the edge. So it, it's it's generally the, the hardest part, assuming you have good wing defense, is finding your angle. Um, the hardest part for me is because I, I tend to try to draw the foul almost every time. So the hardest part for me is playing through that and still putting my shot off, even if because then I was going to blow the whistle and, and then I just waste a shot. So the hardest part for me is staying focused, take the hit, quote unquote, on the ankle or whatever, maybe flop, and then and then still finish the shot. Um, but if you're just learning it, it's it's about the steps. You go left, right, left, pop up, jump out, or right, left, right. Yeah, or yeah, lefties out there. Uh, yeah, Mark, I, th- I think that's a good, very good point about like drawing the contact and still getting the shot off. I'm like at the point myself where like I can draw contact like with steps without too much issue. Mm-hmm. And I I can draw penalty shots. I just don't get the shot off. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of these being afraid too. Like I don't want to take the contact naturally because I'm not a contact. Like I've never played a contact sport. Right. I think that's where like you played like lacrosse, right? No. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Actually, I, I didn't play contact sports either. No. Yeah. Um, I could have sworn you did. I thought you played tennis, Mark. I did play tennis. Yeah, uh, I knew Mark. Mark was good at tennis. Mark's probably better at tennis than me. I was a two seed in high school. So I'll give you that. <laughs> one, one doubles, two singles. I was uh I was two doubles, three singles. Up to God, singles. Ahead of you, Although I went to a private school. I only had a class of fifty eight when I graduated, so Okay. We had a thirty person tennis team. Yeah, there you go. So I only had uh, you, 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 I, you maybe just I'll play I'll play you one time and we'll see what happens. We, we had we had cuts. It was pretty intense. So uh, we got a question yeah, in the chat from Martin about Team Chaos. 
So he's asking if it's just the new version of United or Rogue. I would say no, uh, because United was like a weird part Auburn, part Nyack, mm. part residency yeah, team. You're not, you're not making people be residency. No, and I'm just, and the key is it's all about growth. Like there will be a European factor where we're sending guys to Europe on a, on a team trip and we're bringing European coaches over. Um, so it's a little bit different, um, but the goal is for them to basically combine and compete as one, you know, cohesive unit that can help bring back experiences to their respective clubs that they learn from playing together at a higher level um, to kind of help reinforce the game. So take that interpretation for what you want, um, but that's, that's kind of how we're envisioning it. Um, like so, so let's get back to let's get back to Mark's tips on the wings here. Yes. So Mark, getting that shot off, is there anything like you've developed yourself? You have your own like very unique wing style of playing, which I consider similar to the Michael Banji style. I learned from him. <laughs> yeah, both, both of you are fantastic wings. Like Michael is probably yeah. the most underrated player in the, in the system. No one, yeah. no yeah. one developed greater style. than Michael did. Yeah. No one. I mean, Michael it went from. Balance, I still can't do his. Like he goes tweener on the legs. His balance yeah. goes top corner every time. Yeah. Uh, he went from unutil unutilizable to like a solid starter. Um, you know, it's and, and Mark. I'll say, you know, both of you guys, same kind of thing. You went had a pretty big growth, and I'd say Mark. Now, you've kind of like filled more into your frame, and you're not afraid of that contact, like you said, and that's a huge, yeah, I mean, it's been a huge confidence we, we boost to your play. We never moved Benji out of the wing. Mark can go play center back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you did for some tournaments and stuff. I think if we got you some goggles or uh, contacts yeah. that might, you know, there'd be less right, broken right. glasses right. sometimes. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, back, as we call it yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the funniest thing is you look at pictures of Mark, and I don't know if it's Brendan's dad or whoever took pictures, but always you look at, like, an action shot of Mark in a wing shot, it's the same positioning, this different colored jersey. It's, like, but photoshopped. I mean, it's it's incredible. The form that, is that's consistent. That's the consistency you need on the yes. wing, like, right? If you have a consistent shot, take it. That's that's the thing. Like, one thing Michael does that I do now, I, and it felt so weird at the time, but like he kind of, after his first step, he kind of like ducks in and then comes up and comes out, which is like unnecessary, quote unquote, but like it's it's a rhythm. Like say batting stance is the same thing. Like when I get my shot, I'm coming down and then coming up for no reason. It's probably doesn't work because of the back. But as a wing, they have the time and I know I can't be touched. Just do your three steps however you're comfortable doing them. Get in there and, and then take your shot. The, the coming down to come up is to help boost your um jump you know mountain. you get get a little bit deep squat so you can explode out into the six so i don't know maybe it's your subconscious telling you what you needed to do sure uh, I, I just followed his form like i'm like why is he taking those two steps so weird and then i'm like i'll do it and sure enough sure. It, yeah. Yeah. and that's a great mentor to have him so yeah. i think everyone in the program was very happy with and him. i hope i don't know i haven't seen brandon this year but i know he was developing well behind me so i hope he is doing well as a wing for high we gotta, school. Yeah. This is what we got to fix for Brendan is this. He's, you can't see me, but he uh, we got to work. I know he was listening. I saw the booty slapping captain is his username. I saw it <laughs> on there. Uh, he's got to get his arm away from his body. And it's something I was trying to teach the kids at lacrosse practice this week is that, you know, these kids are short arming it and there's too much whip in their stick. So the ball's just going straight into the ground. So I'm like, look, you got to get your arm out and away and release up, up top. All right, same thing with handball. You get your arm out away from your body, okay? That way you can utilize different angles to, to shoot around the defender, mess around with the goalie. There's a, a lot of variances, but if you're short-arming it, you're both losing power, you're losing shot angle, you're losing, uh, you know, what what kind of confusion yep. you can do on the defender and goalie. So he, he we're working on it, but I, I'm trying to do, a, we'll call it the Hanson drill, just have him hold – the, the ball out from their arm, maybe 10, 10 yards apart, you do. and just flick it. Uh, all just wrist to focus on just that wrist movement, and then we'll get into normal 
full arm. The one you do that's so great, I'm sure you've done it with him too, is when you're standing there holding the ball for him. So he has to reach up and grab it with his hand fully extended. Otherwise, he's not going to Yeah, that, that, I really like that one. It's we, tough. Uh, we haven't done that this year due to uh, COVID restrictions. Oh, but um, yes, restrictions. No, normally that is a good one. Get a, For those that are listening, you would stand on a box or, uh, you know, if I think box is best so that they force him to jump a little bit more. But basically, you stand on a box, I hold the ball up here, the wings come through with their jump progression, grab the ball midair from my hand, and that way they keep their arm up in the act of shooting and then fall through. In lieu of a box, you could stand further into the six, I suppose, and have them jump out, but definitely higher would be better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Either way, angle, there's angle's options. Angle's a bit weird there. Yeah. If he's inside. So, yeah, because you have to reach, you know, reach out to grab him and stuff. So it definitely yeah. would be best to be outside the six and get high. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other ways. Mark, we got a minute and a half left. I think this is our our end of the show. Great episode. Sure. Do you got any closing remarks for our listeners? Go play handball, dude. If you're in South, if you're in South Ohio, Southern Ohio, anywhere within. Southwest, as we uh, mistakenly yeah, I didn't realize how far I, west is. I, I <laughs> just, uh, I just like was not thinking this morning, so that's my mistake. But southwest, south, whatever you want to call it, anywhere in the fifty miles of the Cincy area, hit me up, and we'll get you a spot or give you a try out to the Cincy team, and we'd love to have yeah, you. Try, try it's really important there. Got to make yeah. sure they're yeah. it's, tough. it's brutal. A lot, lot of cuts, position, but we'll see if we can squeeze you in. So uh, uh, go out, come play handball. Hit me up. We'll get together. That'd be great. Cool. And Mark, Thank I got you your shooters. social media Thank post. You, I got your social social media information on the next slide here. And uh, like Max said, as always, keep shooting, shooters. Hey, thanks, Mark. This was great, dude. Good. Great, great to have you guys. Thank you so much. Great seeing you, man. Fantastic. Shooters out, right, guys.